Hey everyone, Chuck Espinoza here with my best friend, Cartoon Tom, to talk to you about potential acoustic gain and needed acoustic gain of a system. So Cartoon Tom's going to run you through a quick lesson, and then I'm going to talk about one of the things that's always brought up when we talk about PAG and NAG, and how it affects our system, and why sometimes PAG NAG's kind of funny. It's all in the math, so take it away, Cartoon Tom. When we go to build or design an audio system, one of the questions we ask ourselves is, is the system stable? What we mean by that is, is the system stable? Is it going to be free from ringing and then the eventually feedback that, occur, that can occur in a sound system? So is it going to be free from ringing and feedback? That's what we mean by, is a system going to be stable? Well, we can calculate that. All of this is predictable. And we're going to use what are called the PAG and NAG calculations. PAG stands for potential acoustic gain. That's what my system will deliver. That's the capability of my system. And we are going to compare that against the NAG, the needed acoustic gain. This is what I need from my system. Now, it would seem obvious the potential of my system needs to be greater than or equal to the need or what I need out of my system so that, again, the system is going to be stable. Now, you can see this formula here out of some of the math sheets. And what you're going to see here on the left is the NAG formula. 20 times the log of, and you see the little 10 there at the bottom. That just means a common logarithm, base 10. And that you get a common logarithm by just hitting the log button on your calculator. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just base 10. And then we'll look at all the variables here. But the needed acoustic gain needs to be less than the potential acoustic gain. And we're going to calculate all this and, and look at some of the other numbers as well. So let's take a look at this. So here's an illustration of a sound system. And let's start with D0. D0 is going to be the distance from the source to the listener. D1 is going to be the distance from the microphone to the loudspeaker. D2 is going to be the distance from the loudspeaker to the listener served by that loudspeaker. And then DS is just simply the distance from the source to the microphone. And that's just an easy way to remember that. S for source, source to microphone. There's a couple of other things that factor in here. We've got the D0, D1, D2, and DS. There's also EAD. EAD stands for equivalent acoustic distance. In other words, at what distance from the source do I receive an adequate level unamplified? So how far am I away from the source? Am I still receiving an adequate level unamplified? Now, in all sorts of industry resources, you can see an EAD chart for speech. And you can say, OK, I'm so far away in a normal voice, I can expect so-and-so decibels as, as far as sound pressure level. By the way, this chart assumes a 25 dB signal to noise ratio. Don't worry about trying to copy this down. It's available in all sorts of industry resources. So that, I can, I can use this to get an idea of what maybe my EAD should be. There's also the FSM. FSM stands for Feedback Stability Margin. In other words, how do I keep it free from that ringing before it goes into feedback? And there's two numbers that you'll see for this. For a sound system that's been equalized, in other words, its response has been smoothed out, you would use an FSM Feedback Stability Margin of 6 decibels. For a system that's non-equalized, you'll see that the 12 dB number is used. And lastly, what we're going to factor in is NOM, which stands for Number of Open Microphones. This is going to be a 10 log function. And what, since it's 10 log, that relates to power. What you find is every time I double the number of open microphones, I lose 3 dB before feedback. That's because you're doubling the acoustic power that's going into the system by opening up a second microphone. If we use like an automatic microphone mixer, you'll find that the equivalent output of an automatic microphone mixer is only one open microphone. That's the beauty of having an automatic microphone mixer. So if I had, and the NOM here, 10 times the log of the number of open microphones. So if I just have one open microphone, 10 times the log of one, and let's see what that works out as. I'm just using this as an example. 10 times the log of one one open microphone like an auto mixer, you'll find the NOM in this case will be zero. So we've looked at all of our variables and we've seen how to work out the NOM number using a 10 log function. Let's plug in some real numbers and let's see what we get. So I've written out the PAG NAG or PAG equation here and the NAG equation here and if I go back and look at what I've got here, I need to 
do everything within the parentheses here. So what I discovered is I need another set of parentheses. In other words, I'm going to do what's at the top. I'm going to do what's at the bottom. I'm going to take the top, divide by the bottom, solve all that within the parentheses before I take the logarithmic function of that number and multiply times 20. So let's go ahead and fill out our numbers here. And I want to make sure that, and I do this a lot of times, write it out, put all my parentheses in the right place so that I can enter it into the calculator correctly. OK, so we have 20 times the log of my two parens, d0, which is the source to listener, times d1, which is the distance from the microphone to the loudspeaker, divided by d2, which is the distance from the loudspeaker to the listener, times ds. And this is the distance from the source to the microphone. And that is 1.5. Now, this can be in US customary. It can be in meters. It could be in furlongs, just as long as you're using the same units. All right, so let's plug this into our calculator, and let's see what we get for a PAG. So 20 times the log, open up a second paren, 25 times 7, close that paren, divided by, open up a paren again, 7 times 1.5, and then two parentheses to close. The enter button, and we end up with, so far, we're not done yet, a PAG, and it's going to be OK to round this, 24.5. So 24.44. So that's what we have for a PAG so far. Let's see what we get on the NAG side. We have 20 times the log of D0, and it's going to be the same D0 that we used a moment ago. And the EAD, equivalent acoustic distance, is going to be 4. So 20 times the log of 25 divided by 4. Let's see what we get. 20 log. 25 divided by 4, close the paren, and rounded here 15.92. So nag equals 15.92. Two more things we need to factor in. We've checked off D0, D1, D2, DS, and the EAD. We still have FSM and NOM to deal with, the feedback stability margin and the number of open microphones. The NOM here, we were using automatic microphone mixer. I can do one of two things here. I can take my PAG and add, I'm sorry, subtract, because I want to take it away from the potential of my system, negative or minus the FSM and minus the NOM to come up with a final PAG. Or I can take my NAG and add the FSM and add the NOM to come up with a final nag. One or the other, do not do it on both sides. Let's go ahead and subtract it from our PAG and see what we come up with. So let's get rid of all this for a moment. We have a PAG of 24.44. We said our feedback stability margin was 6 and NOM 0. So let's take away the 24.44 minus 6 FSM and then minus 0. So we end up with a final PAG of 18.44. We're going to compare that against the NAG of 15.92. This is in decibels. So my PAG, after subtracting for FSM and NOM, I come up with 18.44. I'm going to compare that against my NAG of 15.92. Do I have more PAG than I do NAG? Yes, I can go ahead and build the system. And that's how you would work out PAG and NAG calculations. All right, so Cartoon Tom gave us a great example on how to do the math equations associated with PAG and NAG. One question always comes up to me is, what happens if we have a soft talker? I seem to do my PAG and NAG equations and everything's right in the math, but then I get that person who just, you have to get face to face to talk to them. Well, as we know from our EAD chart that Tom pulled up, that human voice is about 66 dB at one meter. So what happens if we get somebody who has a voice of maybe 50 dB at one meter? Well, if you look at the chart, we have to get face to face to talk to them to really be able to understand them and to uh, discern their speech and their conversation. This happens with our microphones as well. Those microphones, we adjust that sensitivity for a normal talker and then we get that soft talker and turn it up and boop, all of a sudden we have feedback. So. 
How do we calculate for that? Well, if you have somebody who has a soft voice and your system has a potential of, say, 18 dB, a needed acoustic gain of, say, 12 dB, you have 6 dB to spare. So if they're down 50 dB and they need to get up to 66 dB, well, how is that going to work? Same way, same math. If we can move the microphone from 1.5 feet to 0.75 feet, 9 inches, we just gain 6 dB. Now, let's see, I'm at 50, I have to get up to 66, I just gained 6, now I'm at 56. My system has a potential of 18, needed of 12, I have 6 left over, I just boosted at 12, I need 4 more dB. And right there at that DS, that equation where we have the mouth hole to microphone, that's where we really get our gain. If I can go from 1.5 to 0.75, 9 inches to 4.5 inches, I've just gained 12 dB. 12 dB plus the extra 6 that my system had, that gives me 18 dB. If I'm trying to get from 50 to 66, boom, I just did it. So, take what Cartoon Tom said, figure out what your, your talkers are doing. If you need to, you can even just get an SPL meter and hold it up to them about a meter away. Figure out what they're doing. And if you have a talker that has a very, very low speaking voice, very, very soft speaking voice, low in intensity, don't be afraid to put that microphone closer to them. And that's what's going to make you have a great sounding system. Loud enough, stable, and intelligible. For intelligibility, we have an EQ video. You can watch that. And for loud enough, we have another video about adjusting your power amplifier for the room. You can watch that one. Hope you've enjoyed this. And thanks a lot, Cartoon Tom.